شهادة اللهم صل على محمد وعلي محمد السلام عليكم يا علي مدد Tonight, as we know, is the second Ramadan, and as we know, we have started a new series of lecture, which was which started on the first of Ramadan and will continue until the thirtieth of Ramadan. In this series of lecture, we talk about some very knowledgeable, important topics for our youth, for our azadar. Which is why tonight we will talk about another interesting, knowledgeable topic for all azadar all around the world. Because tonight I will discuss about everything regarding tayammum. How to perform tayammum? When does tayammum become obligated? When do you have to perform tayammum? How do you perform tayammum? And on what exactly can you perform tayammum? So these three things tonight I will talk about. So as we know, tayammum is a ritual act that becomes obligated instead of wuzu or ghusl. In two verses of the Quran, it talks about the tayammum. First of all, Quran chapter 4, ayat number 43. And then Quran chapter 5, ayat number 6. And there are more than 220 hadiths that talk about manners, conditions, and everything about Tayammum, which shows the important the importance of Tayammum. So now a lot of people may now the first thing I want to talk about is when does Tayammum become obligated? When do we have to perform Tayammum? So first of all, one who cannot perform wuzu needs to perform tayammum instead of wuzu for what requires wuzu to do. So when we want to pray namaz, to pray namaz, we need to make wuzu. But if we want to pray namaz and we cannot make wuzu for a lot of reasons which I will name, then we have to do tayammum. If we need to do ghusl, but we cannot perform ghusl, then we need to make tayammum. So when do we have to make tayammum exactly? First of all, if there is not enough water for ghusl or wuzu. So if we want to pray but there's not enough water for ghusl or wuzu, then we will perform tayammum. When there is enough water that is available for wuzu or ghusl, but using the water may cause harm for our companions or for ourselves when it comes for drinking. If consuming the water, if we do have water to make ghusl or wuzu, but this may cause harm to animals, our animals, or other animals. If using the wuzu or ghusl water can be harmful for the body. So let's say for medical reason, water cannot touch your body. Let's say you have a very deep cut, bandage, and you cannot put water on your body because you know your doctor said it's dangerous. Then just perform tayammu. See, it's not very... It's not very harsh. You can just perform tayammum. And last but not least, if there is not enough time to make wuzu or ghusr. So let's say uh, you the namaz is going to be kaza in a couple of minutes and you're in a hurry. And you know if you go make ghusr, if you go make wuzu both, you will miss your namaz. Your namaz will become kaza. Then you are allowed to go and make tayammum. So now that we have talked about you know, tayammum, when you have to do tayammum. Let me now tell you exactly how you do tayammum. So let me bring you a little down. So you guys, you all as a dad, you can now see my table. So I am making tayammum on this table. But this does not mean you can make tayammum on table. I will tell you in a couple of minutes what you can do tayammum on. So the first thing we will do when we want to make tayammum is we will take off all objects Everything from ring to bracelet to glasses, everything. The second thing we will do is we will push our hair back. So we have my hairline, we will push the hair all the way back. We will make sure the hair is not coming on my forehead. I will make sure there is nothing on my wrist, such as a watch or a bracelet, and there is nothing on my finger, such as rings. So now when I am coming to make tayammum, I need to make niyat. I need to make my intention. So if I am performing tayammum instead of ghusl, I will say I am performing tayammum instead of ghusl. If you are performing tayammum instead of wuzu, you will say I am performing tayammum instead of wuzu. And if you are performing tayammum instead of both wuzu and ghusl, simply include it in your niyat. So now, let me pre let's pretend I need to make tayammum for wuzu. So pay attention to the steps. I perform tayammum instead of wuzu. Qurbatan ilallah.
Once I have made my niyat, I will take both of my hands and I strike them at the same time. So you need to strike your hands at the same time. It can be a little touch, not a soft touch. You need to strike your hands at the same time. Now that you've striked your hand, you will pick up your hands, the palms. Now you will bring the palms of your hands to the beginning of your hairline. So this is a hairline. I will begin, I will put the palms of my hand here and you slide it down to the top of your eyebrows. Now it is recommended to go left and right a little bit and then you come back in the middle and it is also recommended to slide on your nose. Perfect. So now that I have striked and done the forehead part, I will grab my left hand. So the palm of my left hand will now go from the wrist of my right hand until the tip of the fingers of my right hand. So I take the palm of my left hand like this, I put it on the wrist of the right hand, and I slide it down until the tip of the fingers of my right hand. Now I take my right hand palm and I rub the right hand palm starting from the wrist of my left hand until the finger. So I take the right hand palm like this, slide it down until the tip. Now once again we strike like this. And now same thing, you grab your left hand, the palm of my left hand should go from the wrist of my right hand until its tip. And then the palm of my right hand should go on the wrist of my left hand just like this until its tip. And we have performed successfully tayammu. So let me bring back the camera to an angle. So that's how you perform tayammu for all azada. So just to give a quick recap once again, remove all hair from the forehead, remove your glasses, your rings, your bracelets. You strike your hands, first you make niyat, why are you performing tayammum? Strike your hands, you do the forehead part which consists of taking the palm of both hands from the hairline till the eyebrows go a little left right and then slide down your nose. Take the palm of your left hand, rub it on the top of your right hand like this, from the wrist till the tip of the finger. Take the palm of your right hand, rub it from the wrist until the tip of your left hand. Strike again, repeat the same step. Take the palm of your left hand, rub it, from the wrist till the tip of the fingers of your right hand. Then take the palm of your right hand, rub it from the wrist until the tip of the fingers of your left hand. As you can see, tayammum, very simple, very easy, nothing complicated, very easy to understand. So now let me tell you some important points when it comes to tayammum. So in tayammum, mawalat, mawalat is not allowed. You are not, mawalat is a condition you should. Which means you should not take a long break between the steps. When I was teaching all azadar how to perform tayammum, I was taking little breaks to show you, but you are not allowed. In reality, you should take zero gaps, zero breaks between the steps. Which means once you make niyat for your tayammum, you go. You do not take a break. You do not say, okay, what do I do now? Hmm, I do my hand part. You stop, you take a break a little 30 second gap. Now, no, 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 no. You are not allowed to do that. It had, there has to be zero gap. Just like in namaz, we don't do nam we don't do gaps in namaz, gaps in wuzu. There should be no gaps during tayammum. Second of all, in tayammum, the place to be touched should be still and the hands should move on it. Which means if I am doing it on a wall, the wall should be still and my hands should be able to move on it. Number three, the organs involved in tayammum should be ritually pure and there should be no obstacle on them. So if there's nijasa, watch it off. Take off your glasses, take off the rings, take off the bracelets. Under normal conditions, one should not get help from someone else when performing tayammum. So in a normal situation, you should not be asking someone to help you make tayammum. You know, lifting your hands, helping you make tayammum. You shouldn't be asking for help. Of course, if you're asking help on how to make tayammum verbally, it's okay. But what I'm saying you when you should not ask for any help is when the person is literally doing everything for you by lifting your hands. No, 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 no. You should do it by yourself. Also, it is said that rubbing of hands on the nose is not necessary. So as I mentioned, when you're going to bring your hands down like this, go a little left, right, you are not forced to slide down on your nose, but it's a two second thing. So if you want, just slide down on your nose. It's more precautionary. So now we've talked when tayammum becomes obligated, how to perform tayammum. So now let's talk about where can I perform tayammum? 
Can I perform Tayammum everywhere I want? No. I was performing Tayammum on a box, by the way. But no, you are not allowed to perform Tayammum on a box or on your desk. This was just an example for my Azada. You are not allowed to do it. So you now pay attention. And now let me tell you what you can actually perform Tayammum on in case you ever need to. In Quran, Quran, Tayammum is said to be performed on Saeed. It is said to perform Tayammum on Saeed. But there is, of course, a difference of opinion on what the terminology Saeed exactly means. Because some believe Saeed only refers to the soil, the earth. Yet some believe, yes, it refers to the soil and to the earth. But it also refers to what grows out of the earth. According to some fatwas, according to some teachings, Tayammum must be performed. Your first option should be soil, earth. But of course, I understand that it's hard for us to find earth, specifically in Western countries. It's snowing outside. We can't find earth. It's raining. It's, it's possible, but it's impossible for someone to find earth. So if you don't have earth, your second option should be sand, gravel, clod, clay, or stone. Yet the stone must have some dust on it. So if I don't have earth with me, I can do it on sand, gravel, clod, clay. And if I'm doing it on stone, the stone should have dust on it. Once again, it's very possible and normal that we still don't have these resources sitting in our homes. It could be snowing outside. It could be raining. And we don't have sand. We don't have gravel. We don't have stones. So don't worry. If you don't have this, there is a difference of opinion whether you can do tayemum on plaster. But you can do Tayammum on plaster, cement, brick, tiles, but it needs to have dust on it. Which means, let's say in some day you can't get earth, you can't get gravel, sand, you can't get anything. Yes, if my wall is made out of plaster, I can perform Tayammum on my wall, but I need to make sure there's dust on my wall. If I will perform Tayammum on cement, brick, or tile, I need to make sure there is dust on on the tile, the cement, the brick, or the plaster in order for my tayammum to be successful. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa Ali Muhammad. We have concluded tonight's lecture on how to perform the tayammum. Of course, this was a very brief introduction. Now, if you have more questions, because there are a lot of exceptions, a lot of questions regarding Tayammum. You can go and you refer to the book Tawziyul Masail, a very famous book. Now, if you don't have this book in copy, this book is actually available on the internet in all languages, French, English, Spanish, Urdu, Hindi, Persian, Arabic, every single language in the world. You can refer to it. Of course, if your questions, if you have more questions, you can refer to the teaching to be information. You can refer to Ayatollah Sistani's teaching, Ayatollah Khomeini's teaching. You can refer to their teaching, their books, if you have more questions. It's important to follow your marja, the Ayatollah you are following, because they all have resources available on the web, on the internet, for your questions. Thank you very much for paying attention to this incredible lecture about how to perform tayammum.